السلام علیکم ہم آپ کو نا یہ کچھ معائنہ کرنے لگے ہیں دیکھتے ہیں کہ آپ کی آنکھ میں کیا پرابلم ہو رہی ہے سو وانٹ ٹو ایگزامن دس از اے ڈائبیٹک پیشنٹ ہو پرزینٹیڈ ود واٹ یو کین سی از دی کلوزر آف دی لیفٹ آئی شی ہیڈ پین ان دا لیفٹ آئی اینڈ دین شی اسٹارٹیڈ ہیونگ اے لاس آف ویژن اینڈ دا موومنٹ ان دی آئی ناؤ وی ایگزامن دی کرین آف گراسلی آف دس پیشنٹ وین یو لک کیئرفلی ایٹ دی آئی یو سی On not only the color has changed, the eye is slightly swollen as compared to the right eye. Now, when we examine this patient, we do not examine the first cranial nerve. We examine from the second cranial nerve and uh, third, uh, fourth and sixth cranial nerve and then seventh cranial nerve. And in between, we also are going to check fifth cranial nerve. She has got abnormalities in these regions. Now, when we see this patient's second cranial nerve, The right eye is opening normally and the patient has a normal vision from the right eye. If we check the distant vision and the close vision, they are okay. The light reflex in the right eye is normal. The patient responds directly to the light. The pupil is in slightly constricted position but when we shine light in it, patient shows constriction of the pupil. So the direct reflex is normal in this Uh, right eye. Now we examine the extra ocular muscles. What has happened to these? You see, some of the kind of Aapne meri ungli ko dekhte rehna hai. Iske saasat. Now you just follow my eye fingers. And you can see The left eye is fixed. Patient doesn't have vision in the left eye as well. And when we de- do the reflex, pupil is dilated and doesn't respond to light. And you see there is no consensual response in the right eye as well. So the patient has involvement of the extra ocular nerves on the left side and there is involvement of the second nerve as well. This patient had Uh, on examination of the nasal cavity and biopsy proven mucormycosis now probably this patient has involvement of the left cavernous sinus because of which the second nerve is gone all the extra ocular nerves are gone and now we see the fifth cranial nerve we see ye mehsoos hota hai aapko yahan pe yahan pe یہاں پہ یہاں پہ یہاں پہ سو دا پیشنٹ ہیز کمپلیٹ لاس آف ففتھ کرینل نرو آن دا لیفٹ سائڈ ایز ویل دیر از نو سینسری پرسیپشن آن دا لیفٹ سائڈ ان آل تھری ڈویژنس دیٹ از آف تھیلمک مینڈیبلر اینڈ میگزلری ڈویژنس وی چیک دی موٹر کمپوننٹ آف دس نرو وچ وین آئی ایگزامن واز نارمل وی ڈیمانسٹریٹ دیٹ منہ کھولیں زور سے سو اٹس آل رائٹ جبڑا اس طرف موڑیں اس طرف دھکا لگائیں میری انگلی کو اس کو دھکا لگائیں ایسے ایسے یہ دیکھیں جبڑا ہی لانا ہے نیچے والا نہیں منہ ہی لانا ہے نیچے سے یہ نیچے والے داؤن یہ منہ کھولیں تھوڑا سا یہ آپ اس کو دھکا لگائیں اس طرف میرے نہیں میرے گٹھے کو دھکا لگائیں اس طرف نہیں منہ کھول کے لگائیں منہ کھول کے آپ اس طرف دھکا لگائیں ہاں اس طرف یہ دیکھیں میری طرف میری طرف دیں گے ایسے ہاں دانت پیچھے زور سے ٹھیک پھر زور سے زور سے پیچھے زور سے پھر زور سے دانت پیچھے دیکھیں میری طرف دانت ایسے دانت پیچھے زور سے پھر پھر سو دیر از سم ویکنیس آئی فیل ان دی میسٹر مسل اینڈ ٹیمپرالس بٹ ادر وائز دی ٹیریکوائڈس آر ورکنگ نارملی اینڈ ناؤ وی ایگزامن دی سیونتھ کرینل نرو ماتھے پہ بڑھ ڈالیں ذرا ٹھیک دانت دکھائیں ذرا اپنے سو یو کین سی دیر از لوور موٹر ٹائپ آف فیشیل پیرالس ایز ویل اینڈ ناؤ وی چیک دی ایٹتھ کرینل نرو یہ آواز آ رہی ہے آپ کو دی ایٹتھ کرینل نرو از نارمل اینڈ وی ایگزامن دی پیلٹ آف دی پیشنٹ دا پیلٹ از موونگ نارملی بولے آ بولے So the palate is moving normally. So the 10th cranial nerve is working normally. 
So this patient has involvement of the left second cranial nerve, third, fourth, sixth cranial nerve, part of the fifth cranial nerve as well. The sensory component of the whole of the uh, fifth cranial nerve is paralyzed while there is partial weakness in the left masseter. So the temporalis is contracting normally and the pterygoids are working normally. So now where is the lesion? Now we have examined this patient, we did a limited examination on cranial nerves. We omitted the first cranial nerve, patient had mucormycosis on the left side of the nose, so that will compromise the examination of the first cranial nerve. We omitted the ninth cranial nerve, the 11th and 12th. These nerves are probably not going to give us information about where is this uh, patient's lesion located. Uh, we see the cranial nerve syndrome because predominantly the left eye is involved. Now, these cranial nerve syndromes may be orbital apex syndrome, the superior orbital fissure syndrome, the cavernous sinus syndrome that is lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, orbital cellulitis and the retrosphenoid space syndromes. In these conditions, the uh, ocular cranial nerves are involved most of the time. Now we see these one by one. You see orbital apex syndrome, what happens in orbital apex syndrome. There is invasive fungal infections, amyloidosis, granulomatous disorders are the usual causes of the orbital apex syndrome. And the cranial nerve involved are the second, the third, the fourth, the first division of the fifth cranial nerve and the sixth cranial nerves. These patients generally do not have proptosis. They may have a little bit of proptosis, but they generally don't have proptosis. And then you got superior orbital fissure syndrome. You see, this is because of the invasive tumors of the sphenoid bone and there may be aneurysm of the blood vessels surrounding this area. So this may be there. And we, what we see is there is involvement of the third, fourth, first division of the uh, fifth nerve and the sixth cranial nerve. And then we've got lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, that is cavernous sinus syndrome. This is because of infections, thrombosis, aneurysms or fistula, tumors, in the area surrounding the cavernous sinus or there is granulomas. Bina and granulomas are usually involved in the cavernous sinus. The involvement is third cranial nerve, the fourth, the first division of the fifth, sometimes the second division of the fifth is also involved. So ophthalmic and maxillary divisions are involved. The patients, they tend to have proptosis. Since there is traction on the second nerve and the ophthalmic artery, these patients may have loss of vision as well. Then orbital cellulitis, this is called by infections. These may be bacterial or fungal infections. Sometimes the proptosis is caused by the tumor, but that actually is not cellulitis. The involvement in these patients is third, fourth, and uh, sixth cranial nerves. The patients have proptosis. Second nerve may be involved. Patient may have diplopia, and small percentage of patient may also develop visual loss. That is, second nerve may be affected in these patients as well. And then we've got retrosphenoid space lesions. These are because of the large tumors of the middle cranial fossa. And they involve second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth cranial nerves. Now you see this comes pretty close to our patient's uh, clinical features, the involvement of the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. But this patient has only involvement of the left side and there is proptosis, which is not seen in middle cranial uh, fossa tumor. So patient is diabetic and there is a history of mucor in the adjacent nose. So probably this is not our differential. So our patient has second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh cranial nerves. Now it's difficult to explain how is the seventh cranial nerve is involved because Seventh cranial nerve has a different course and any lesion which can affect these nerves usually does not affect seventh nerve. Seventh nerve is affected by sometimes the uh, aneurysm of the internal carotid artery but that is a different place that is it's in the petrous part not in the cavernous sinus. So we cannot anatomically explain why the seventh cranial nerve is involved. So it's difficult to explain on one anatomical site. So this may be patient has orbital 
apex or cavernous sinus syndrome with seventh nerve paralysis as possibly diabetic mononeuropathy. So this may be the lesion and let's see what turns out on further examination. We are planning for the uh, MRI of this patient, see the, how is the orbit and the surrounding structures in the orbit and as we get the MRI we will further update you what's the cause of this patient's uh, lesion.